what's up everyone? So today I have a pretty cool surprise for you. This company called Eco Garden Systems reached out to me and said, hey, do you wanna try out our raised bed? And I'm always down to try something new, something fun, I can experiment with it and show it to you guys here on the channel. And so I said, sure, you know, go ahead. I'd love, you can send one out, feel free. And look what came. Look at that. It is absolutely massive. It is huge. I can actually reach it standing up. It's a really cool wicking raised bed garden system. So today's video is gonna be how we set this up, how I filled it up with soil, and then at the end, I'll show you what I've got planted in it so far and then what's to come. So stay tuned guys, let's grow in the world's craziest raised bed. So the first thing to do was to just unpack this monster of a raised bed. And so you can see we've got these legs here and then you have the feet and it's all made out of this heavy duty, very durable food safe plastic that's made actually from recycled milk cartons and other food safe materials like that. So what we're doing here is we have to set this up correctly because according to Jim, who's the man in the white shirt who came out to install it with me, it weighs 1,500 pounds when all is said and done, which is without a doubt the heaviest raised bed I've ever dealt with myself. Uh, and the reason for that is twofold. You've got obviously the bed itself weighs around 250 pounds, so that's no lightweight bed at all. But second, this is housing both water and soil. And so we know that water is about 8.3 pounds per gallon, and this holds 74 gallons. So you're looking at five, 600 pounds just for the water there. And then the soil is somewhere around 20 cubic feet of soil that's going to go in the top of this system. And so you can see we're putting the supports on, we've got our legs and our feet on, but we actually need to brace those supports because even a little bit of shear force could cause it to collapse without the bracing. So it's very important that we do this correctly. As you can see, I've recruited some help here. I've got Jim from Eco Garden Systems and my friend Chris as well, helping to make sure that we secure this. And now let's talk about some of the reasons you might wanna grow in an elevated bed. And for me, I'm six foot four. And so anything that I can do to avoid bending over as much as possible is something that I'm going to be interested in. So that's one straight up benefit of growing in an elevated raised bed. Here I'm just installing the drain for if you want to actually drain out all of the water, all 74 gallons. Let's say you're moving the bed or you just want to you know, clear out that water and put in some fresh stuff. I'm putting in the overflow valve here as well, which turns out is quite a handy little tool because the last thing you wanna do is have extremely soggy soil. Remember, there's a water reservoir and then there's the soil. And so that water reservoir in theory could overflow, not anymore now that we have the overflow valve and now we've got that float valve in there as well. And so we're, we're setting up all the plumbing here and to get back to the benefits, First of all, for me, again, bending over so many times, I did. I talked about this in my video with Stephen Cornett, the less mechanical movement that you can do that's poor form, the better for your body over the long term when it comes to gardening. And gardening, farming, etc. these are all things that take a toll on the human body. So we need to make sure that we're doing this in a way where we can garden into our old age. So speaking of, this is a fantastic type of system for the elderly and the mobility challenged. Now, let's get back to what I'm doing in the video. I'm putting in some peat moss, about three cubic feet or so, and the reason why is I wanna have a wicking material at the bottom. So three cubic feet out of the 20 total are going to be peat moss, so I'm just breaking it up. Peat moss can actually be somewhat hydrophobic if it's extremely dry, so it needs some time to hydrate and then it will start sucking up moisture like crazy, so you need to make sure that you break it up really nicely and you should be good to go. And so we're layering the bottom with three cubic feet of peat moss. And what's happening there is you can see this black material. That's the separating barrier between our soil and our water reservoir below. And there's a small gap between the water and the soil where there's high humidity and high moisture content and the water just gets sucked up into the peat moss and then gets sucked up by the plant roots once we're actually at that stage of the growing process. So now it's time to actually fill the bed. 
Now, based on that math, we have 20 cubic feet of soil. I've already put in three as a base layer for my peat moss. That means I've got 17 cubic feet left to fill, and I need to satisfy the classic recommendations for a raised bed gardening mix, where you want somewhere around one third of it to be composed of organic matter. You want about one third to be some sort of water retention material, and you want about one third to be an aeration or oxygenating material like a vermiculite or a perlite or pumice or something like that. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding chicken manure, steer manure, and classic garden soil. Now the garden soil is different than potting soil. It's a lower quality ingredient that I'm amending with some of these manures and some of these organic composts you're going to see me add. And that's a way to cheapen the overall cost of creating a mix because soil as we know can be very expensive so I like to add some of the less expensive ingredients and then improve them with some organic additives of my own now I've got my my vermiculite that's going in and I like to put it in the middle so you don't get any uh, blow off when you're trying to you know mix it up I've got a couple cups of worm castings that are going in here these is a very low NPK number but a great source of nutrition and then we're also adding some of my epic soil starter fertilizer that I make in conjunction with Garden Maker. So this is what I created with them in order to create a mix that would take something standard like garden soil and really bring it to the next level, really superpower and supercharge it because, you know, as we said, it's expensive to buy high quality potting soil in the bag. It's much cheaper to mix your own and use a little bit of knowledge and expertise to you know, keep that cost down and sacrifice almost nothing when it comes to the actual quality of the soil that you're making. So I'm adding in a couple more ingredients here. You saw me add a little bit of topsoil that has a little bit of that clay content because you do want some of that. I've found that you can create too fluffy a mix if you just go straight up things from a garden center. You wanna add a little topsoil in there in my opinion and it really does help out the mix. And so now we're going into mixing mode which it's a little tedious, but you do want to make sure that you mix this up well, because if you don't, you're going to get pockets of higher concentrations of one additive versus another. And that's not going to be good for your plants, because think about it, their roots are going to encounter these different sections of the soil that are higher in one element than another, which is just not good. You want a well mixed potting mix or a raised bed mix. And now we're starting this arduous process of filling up the beds. And so I'm gonna leave you guys here and we're gonna go to me after I planted it out, just so you can see what I put in and the plans for the future. So I'm really excited to grow in this bed. I think it'll be a good teaching garden over the course of this growing season and probably many growing seasons to come because it's very easy to demonstrate gardening concepts in this bed because it's easy to film and it's easy to work in because it's so tall and it's perfect for my particular height. So let's go ahead and add the rest of the soil and let's get to the overview. All right, so here we have half of the bed planted, actually a little more than half. And so let me run through what I've got here. All of these with wooden stakes are all rarer varieties of peppers. So we've got uh, Caribbean red habanero, we've got a scotch bonnet, we have black pearl, we have ahi lemon drop, we have petite marseille, we've got sugar rush peach right here, and then I have a jumbo pepper over here. Then I've got my little green section, and the reason I planted the greens in this section is because as the sun comes down over the course of the day, probably in about an hour or so, this is gonna start to get shaded out first. So you can see we've got our chard, our spinach, and our kale here. Kale definitely suffering a little bit in this heat in the summer, but the benefit is once that uh, shade starts to come in, this is gonna perk back up. And you know what, I might as well mulch some of this soil on top as well to make sure that those roots don't get way too hot. Next, I've got some green onions right here, green bunching onions. We have another pepper, and then we have this Willy Wonka looking crazy hot ornamental pepper that I might do a taste test on just to uh, basically provide a little entertainment for you guys because I don't do that well with heat, so we're gonna see how that goes. But that is the overview of the system. I'm very curious what you guys think of a system like this. Like I said, it's a wicking system. And so we built it up on this platform because it's quite heavy. It's about 1,500 pounds when it's all said and done. There's 75 gallons of water in this section right here. Then the soil is right here. We've got that peat moss down there. And then the rest of the soil here for that wicking capillary action. And then I'm really excited to see how this thing grows. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned and definitely let me know what you think about this system in the comments down below.